What's up and welcome to another edition of Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. I got my guy John Roser here via Skype and we got to talk about the week that was, the weekend, just everything. Give you our three points from what we got. And first up, let's talk about the weekend that was right here in Memphis, Tennessee. We had college game day. We had Memphis taking on SMU. Big win for Memphis. Was this the best weekend in Memphis history? Um... Man, we've had some really good weekends, and it's tough to remember all of them. I mean, you had the weekend when Memphis knocked off Tennessee and Peyton Manning. Um, you know, we've had Memphis knock off Eli Manning and Ole Miss uh, mm -hmm. at the Liberty Bowl before. We've had the Tennessee-Memphis one versus two game that was downtown, and ESPN College Game Day was here for that game, the college basketball one. The college basketball version was here for that, and then it was just a party all day downtown. I mean, we've had massive Grizzlies playoff wins. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously the game that won that took them to the Western Conference Finals was actually in Oklahoma City. That wasn't here. But some of those playoff games, that game six win against the Clippers where Zebo got thrown out, Chris Paul got thrown out, Matt Barnes got thrown out and, like, kicked a trash can or something. I mean, some of those were great weekends. But I'll say college game day by far, uh, the football version, it is the biggest pregame show there is. Mm -hmm. um, and for that to be here in Memphis, I mean, there's re it travels every week, and it's packed every week. Um, and this weekend, they're going to Tuscaloosa for Alabama LSU, which right. that's the kind of places you expect them to go. You don't expect to see them in Memphis, Tennessee. And the fact that it was here, I think, yeah, that that was definitely – was def I don't know if it was the biggest. It's definitely one of the biggest. Um, and for Memphis to win the game the way they did, get an entertaining football game too, high scoring, I mean, it was pretty awesome. There's no doubt about it. I mean, you mentioned just all the things that we've had in our history. But when you look at the week alone that we just had, we had the Elton John concert. We had a concert here on Friday night. You had college game day. You had the Grizzlies game. You had so much to do to choose from. It was just, it felt like Memphis was an L.A., you know? It just felt like we were just, we, we had arrived. We've made it. And I think it depends on who you ask, especially different age groups. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, it was amazing to see Bill Street was packed. I don't think I expected us to show out like that, but I don't think I expected to, us to show out. Like, that was crazy, the fans. Liberty Bowl was sold out, and it came down to that fourth quarter, and SMU kept it close, and then it got really good. Memphis gets the win, and it's homecoming. Like, yeah. you, can't, you can't write a better story than that. I think it was the best week of that I think I have seen in a long time. Well, and here's the, here's the other thing, too. The game closed, actually, as Memphis a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Mm -hmm. So if people had Memphis by the six-and-a-half, they weren't too happy with SMU going for that two-point conversion and getting it. <laughs> uh, they, they, they lost on that one. No, it was – and shout-out to Antonio Gibson. Uh, quick story here, because I know we've actually gone long on this one. But in this one, if we're going to go long on a topic, this one is mm -hmm. worth it. Quick story on Antonio Gibson. I actually ran into his dad last year at a Tigers football game. I think because I think Antonio was a JUCO player. Um, and I ran into his dad, I believe it was last season, we were standing in line at a Tiger at the Liberty Bowl. I think we were both in the beer line. We were both getting a beer. And I think, I think the line was taking a while. And so we were both just like, what is going on here? And so we just ended up striking up a conversation. And he told me, because uh, uh, I can't remember what it was, but he, you know, he said he, he, he drove up here from Georgia for the game. And I was like, wait, you drove from Georgia? Because Memphis wasn't playing anybody great. Like, I was like, you drove from Georgia for this game? And he goes, my son. Uh, plays for the team. I was like, who's your son? He said Antonio Gibson. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know who he is. Um, and for Antonio Gibson set the school record for most all-purpose yards in a game on Saturday night. He had an epic performance. Okay. Kick returns, uh, receiving game, rushing touchdowns. He had it all. Antonio Gibson was amazing. And also, Brady White, ever since that Temple game, Brady White has been way, way better. I'm glad the Tigers have a week off because – Mm -hmm. Them having to go play Houston this weekend, that would be a super trap game. But they've got the week off, got a week, to, got an extra week to prepare before they play Houston on November 16th. All right, let's move on to our next topic. As someone who's going to have multiple weeks off is Willie Tagger, Florida State's head coach. He was let go after a Miami loss, and he's only been there just two years. And some people say that there wasn't enough time. What do you think? Was it too soon to fire Willie Tagger? See, I. I I really think, yeah, like, how do you know after two years? Mm -hmm. how, how can you know? Well, before two years are even up, how can you know? But there always is, especially when we see with college sports, these coaches that turn these schools into big-time programs, 
that turned it all around, you usually see it happen in year two, whether that was Nick Saban winning 10 games in his second year at Alabama, Urban Meyer winning a national championship in his second year at Florida, Kirby Smart going to the national championship game in his second year at Georgia. Um, You usually see something big happen or you see some real, real progress in year two. And you were not seeing that um, with Willie Taggart. And I thought Willie Taggart would be a massive success there. It has been a disaster for him, and I just did not see it. He had success at Western Kentucky. He had success at South Florida. Oregon Oregon fans, if you read up on it, Oregon fans were not really that big a fan of his. Mm-hmm. Um, but Florida State, that's an area he is comfortable with. And if you thought, you know, you figured like Florida State, Willie Tech, he's going to kill it recruiting-wise there. And that really hasn't happened either. Uh, he's not just destroying it on the recruiting channel. Now, Florida State gets good players because they're Florida State, but he has not just killed it there. Part of me is like, yeah, I think two years, like, I think they kind of knew, you know, push a T. If you know, you know. <laughs> and I, and I think, but it is like, man, you didn't even give the guy two years. But I'm also the one, like, I get Tennessee football playing better. But I would say Jeremy Pruitt ain't the guy, and they should probably get rid of Pruitt after this year. <laughs> I think Tennessee fans will agree with you on that one. I don't think any, I don't think Taggart was having an awful just yet. If you look at it, they were five and seven last year. They're four and five right now. It probably hasn't gone the way they they wanted it to go. But when Jimbo Fisher left, it was kind of unexpected. So you kind of have to start from the from the ground up. And they only have to win two of their last three games to be bowl eligible. And they have a big shot at that. They've got Boston College, Alabama State, and Florida left. Okay, let's count out Florida. They won't get that one. But those other two wins, they can get that, and they would have been bowl eligible. I think Taggart still had an opportunity. I think he still he still he should have gotten time to prove himself. But hey, he got a twenty million dollar buyout, and <laughs> I take twenty million dollars. So if yeah. you want to let me go for twenty million, I walk out the door with my oh, hands. I, I think what it is is I, I think part of it is if you look at what's happened to them uh, for the most part, the second half they fail. They've been amazing in the first half of games. Um, outside of Miami the other day, Miami on Saturday, and then the Clemson game. The everything else, they were amazing in the first half, and then they fade in the second half. Um, and I think what I mean, the final straw clearly was, as you said, take out the Florida game, because what? You think Florida would likely beat them handily. Right. They just got whooped by their other rival handily in Miami, and mm-hmm. Florida State is like, we're not tolerating this, because that was – that performance on Saturday against Miami was – I mean, they got punked out by their rival, and that is – and I think the president, athletic director of the university just said, no, this is not acceptable. This is not what Florida State is. Um, and made a change. Look, it may not get better. <laughs> you know, you got to yeah. be quite higher if you're Florida State. You know, if they, if they mess up the higher, then things could get worse or things could be the same. Well, okay. Well, he's got $20 million. So he's good. He's good. He's good. Really That's- focused on. Let's get to a topic in the NBA. You know, earlier in the week, last week, we saw a huge fight break out between Carl Anthony Towns and Joel Embiid. Ben Simmons was in there. If you t- looked at the replay, it looked like he had a chokehold on Carl Anthony Towns, but Ben wasn't ejected from the game like Towns and Embiid was. And later on, he still wasn't fined or had a suspension. Some people thought the suspension should have been higher. Some people thought Ben Simmons should have been included in that. What was your take from seeing all of that go down? Well, it was very entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> it was very and then there, there's a, a Twitter fight afterwards. <laughs> Twitter and Instagram fight afterwards. Um, you know, I think Joel Embiid saying, I was raised by lions and a cat came around. I sometimes think he forgets that a lion is a cat. Um, it's a bigger cat. It's not a house cat, but it's a cat. Mm-hmm. Um, look, I, I said this about the, the Lakers-Rockets thing last year when they had, when Rondo and Chris Paul got into it, they're like spitting on each other or whatever, and they only got like it was like a game or two. Um, it, if Adam Silver does not hand out bigger suspensions, this stuff is going to keep happening, and one of these times it's going to spill into the stands. It will. It will. It's different from the NFL, and it's different from college football and from Major League Baseball and from hockey. Uh, there's fighting in hockey all the time, but there's boards and glass to protect fans from it, you know. And in baseball, like, they charge the pitchers, man. Nothing's ever getting into the crowd. And in football, yeah, they have barriers that block stands and every, that, from fans being there, um, from it spilling into the crowd. Whereas in basketball, the fans are right on top of you uh, mm-hmm. with courtside seats. And one of these if, – if, if Adam Silver does not hand out bigger suspensions – 
One of these days, one of these fights is going to spill into the crowd and he's going to have a bigger problem on his hands. Um, I think he should have suspended them longer. I think probably 10 to 15 games each. And you made your, and you make your point. But, mm-hmm. you know, they got two games. Everybody's right. back on the court. And it's all <laughs> over. The but it it's will. All over. Something, look, I said after that Lakers game, if he doesn't do something about this, it's going to happen again. And it happened again with this Minnesota Philly thing. And he didn't do anything. He's not doing anything about it here. If he does, it's going to happen again, and it probably will spill into the crowd at some point, and then he's going to have a bigger problem. I think there is some safety concerns. I don't know if I, I don't, I don't mind seeing. I think they, I think they got suspended the right way. There weren't like any crazy fists thrown. I mean, the only thing I had an issue with was that Ben Simmons clearly had Carl Anthony Towns in a chokehold. Oh, you're I'm, not a WWE fan, are you? I am not a WWE. That, that is close yeah. to what we call the STF. <laughs> but look, think about it. If you watch that replay, I don't know how the referee thought that Ben Simmons was being a peacemaker. Even <laughs> there was nothing peaceful about that. Ben got away with something single-handedly that I don't think I've seen anyone ever get away with. And he walked away grace clean. And I was just shocked. Even even the day after, and said, oh, no, he's not suspended. I would have been upset if I was Carl Anthony Towns, too. Like, hey, well, like, you know, wait a second. That's not fair. You know, do I think that they sh- could you should be suspended? More games. If I had probably seen, you know, more of fist thrown, someone getting punched, or whatever. I think yes. I would like to see the fine go up. I think let's let let's hurt them. I know that they've got, these are multi million dollar men, and you know, even a couple extra thousand dollars might not hurt them as much as it hurts us. Yeah. But I do would love to see them hurt their pockets a little bit, like get into those pockets a little bit more, especially when you see something like that. And I'm really upset that Ben walked away like Scott's clean. I don't get that at all. I was, we got to give props to Ben Simmons. I mean, that was a – like, it looked like he, he's trained. Like, that was a – I mean, he, he locked was, that hole in. He had that locked in, ready to go. Like, and Towns had to tap. Like, yeah. he, had to tap, he was done. He oh, God. That. It's crazy. Well, you know what, Roser? We're out of time. I love this. Three Point Stands presented by Mountain Dew. Same time, same place next week, right here on GrindCityMedia.com. Mountain Dew.